Hi, this is my review of Mastering Ethereum by Andreas Antonopoulos and Gavin Wood. Um, my name is Tom, Thomas Plunkett, and this is part of my Understanding Crypto series. So Mastering Ethereum is probably the best Ethereum textbook in existence. The first edition was published in 2021 by O'Reilly, and Ethereum is changing so fast that honestly, I think this book already needs a second edition. That's how fast Ethereum is changing. The book is very solid from a content and technical perspective, giving you the vision for Ethereum and how Ethereum works. There are programming examples in the book, but you don't need to be a programmer to understand the book's content. The book also has a supporting GitHub site and the GitHub materials are available under a Creative Commons license. Um, you know, just a comment about Andreas and Gavin. Andreas is uh, also the author of Mastering Bitcoin. Uh, he's been in the blockchain space a long time. And Gavin is a co-founder of the Ethereum project. And he has also been in the uh, cryptocurrency space a very long time. Um, as I mentioned, the GitHub materials are available under Creative Commons license. Um, and also this video is being provided under a Creative Commons license. Um, so let's go take a look at the GitHub materials that they make available to support the textbook. So I am going to stop sharing this and I'm going to share the GitHub site. So here's a look at the GitHub site for the Ethereum Mastering Ethereum textbook. It's uh, github.com slash Ethereum book slash Ethereum book. Um, in here, you've got some miscellaneous stuff. Uh, code and so on. Uh, then we got uh, ASCII doc files for each of the chapters. Uh, there's some appendices, appendices uh, covering standards and Ethereum's history and so on. Um, there's a glossary of terms. Um, here we have our um, list of chapters for mastering Ethereum. Well, there's a look at view of the, the, the uh, cover. So here's a list of the chapters that are covered in the textbook. Um, chapter one is what is Ethereum? Kind of gives you a description of what Ethereum is and the history of Ethereum. Uh, chapter two dives into the basics behind Ethereum. You know, how does Ethereum work? How does gas work? All that sort of thing. Um, just a high level view of what you need to know about Ethereum. Um, and then the remaining chapters dive into the details. So chapter three focuses on Ethereum clients. So this is, you know, deploying Ethereum on your desktop or setting up, you know, and being able to work with the Ethereum uh, virtual machine. Chapter four covers cryptography. In particular, it's covering the basics of how keys and addresses work in Ethereum. Um, very similar to the key and address chapter from Mastering Bitcoin, although obviously now we're dealing with how Ethereum approaches keys and addresses and digital signatures. Chapter five covers wallet technology. Again, pretty similar to the wallet chapter in Mastering Bitcoin. Although this time, of course, we're talking about MetaMask and other Ethereum wallets and how they work. Um, chapter six dives into transactions. Um, so we learn about how to um, transact in Ethereum, um, you know, sending currency to other people, you know, as well as sending currency to smart contracts. Chapters seven and eight start to do a deep dive on smart contracts. We start off with doing smart contracts and Solidity. Solidity is the most popular programming language for Ethereum. And so that's what chapter seven is on. Chapter eight takes a look at an alternative programming language called Viper. Viper was created under the assumption that maybe we need a language that doesn't have quite all the capabilities of Solidity to make that language more secure. So chapter eight, we'll talk about Viper, where it's different from Solidity and some of the things you can do with Viper why you might want to consider it from a security perspective. Um, chapter nine continues on with the security theme by giving us an entire chapter talking about smart contract security. And really, honestly, this is absolutely necessary. Um, there are a lot of potential vulnerabilities in smart contracts, uh, you know, and so, you know, one of the most famous smart contracts, the DAO was hacked uh, and so that and it led to a fork of Ethereum. That was how important that hack was. Um, and so security is extremely important in smart contracts. And so that's what chapter nine is about. Chapter 10 covers tokens and it covers the ability to generate your own tokens. So in addition to using Ethereum as a currency, we can generate another token. 
Um, and so there's the basic uh, fungible tokens um, that are you know, generated using ERC-20 and related specifications. Um, and then there's a the non-fungible tokens so that can be generated using ERC-721 and other related uh, token specifications. And so chapter 10 covers both fungible and non-fungible tokens. Chapter 11 covers oracles. Oracles in the context of Ethereum refers to bringing uh, non-blockchain information onto the blockchain. You know, let's say for example, you wanna bring a world, real world stock price onto the blockchain, well, we'd use an Oracle to do that. Or if you wanna to bring today's temperature onto the blockchain, again, you would use an Oracle to do that. So that's what chapter 11 covers. Chapter 12 takes the theory of decentralization and expands it to the entire application, not just um, you know, the blockchain smart contract, but actually having decentralized storage, uh, decentralized web applications, decentralization for messaging. So chapter 12 is applying the theory of decentralization throughout the application uh, or to multiple components within the application, not just a blockchain component. Um, so that's what chapter 12 talks about. And then chapter 13 dives into the details of how these programs and smart contracts are actually being executed on the blockchain. We'll take a deep dive look at the Ethereum virtual machine. In some ways, it's similar to the Java virtual machine, but of course it's executing code on a blockchain. So we'll talk about that in chapter 13. In chapter 14, the authors talk about consensus. There are two primary consensus models uh, that Ethereum is uh, focused on. Uh, originally, Ethereum was focused on proof of work and then uh, Ethereum moved to proof of stake. And so chapter 14 covers both proof of work and how it works in an Ethereum perspective, as well as how proof of stake is, it works from a an Ethereum perspective. So those are the contents and all those materials are here free on the GitHub site. You know, if you click on, for example, what is uh, Ethereum, you go to this chapter, which actually is all the contents from the textbook. So I wanna thank O'Reilly for making these materials available uh, under an open source license, a Creative Commons license on GitHub. Um, I ha have purchased a copy of the book and I highly recommend everyone purchase a copy from O'Reilly, but it's great to see that they also made these materials available so you can access the materials in addition to using uh, the textbook version. So with that, I'm gonna stop sharing um, the GitHub site, although I do wanna make one last mention of something I think is really fantastic in this textbook, which is the glossary. Uh, they, the glossary is here. It's a quick glossary, a list of important terms uh, for Ethereum, you know, how accounts work, addresses work, uh, you know, and so on, how blocks work, how dApps work. Uh, and so this is a great thing to read through just on your own, you know, either before or after you've read the textbook to review your understanding of all the different terms. So with that, I'm gonna stop sharing the GitHub, and I'm gonna switch over to sharing the slides again. So again, just to sum up, this is, I think, the best Ethereum textbook in existence. Uh, first edition was recently published, and honestly, Ethereum is changing rapidly, and it probably does need a second edition. Uh, the book is fantastic from a content and technical perspective, and there are a lot of programming examples, but you don't need to be a programmer to understand the book's content. And so thanks for uh, watching my review and I'll see you another time.